There's a passage in the Old Testament, the book of Isaiah, the 13th chapter, in the 12th verse, where it says, I will make a man more precious than fine gold, even a man than the golden wedge of Ophir. Now, perhaps you remember some time back we looked at gold. Now that there was something special about that gold. Well, God's going to make man more, more perfect. What we're going to look at today is about faith. In the book of Hebrews, it tells us about faith. Of course, it talks about the heroes of faith. Hebrews chapter... 11, verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made by the things which do appear. By faith Abel offered a unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it he being dead yet speaketh. By faith Enoch was translated that he would not see death, and was not found, because God had translated him. For before this his translation He had this testimony that he pleased God. (coughs) But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Let us pray. We're grateful to thee, our Heavenly Father, for bringing us once again into this thine house. We thank thee for the precious truths of thy word. We plead thy great mercy that it endures forever. We plead thy Lamb that takes away the sin of the world, shed blood to redeem us from our sins. We just ask you to help us to perceive the truths of thy word, apply them to our lives and our hearts, understand them, see them, tell them to others. We pray for loved ones that are not in our midst. Keep your protective hands upon them. Grant repentance and faith to the lost. We pray for our country that you'd have mercy upon it. We pray for our leadership that you'd be pleased to grant us leaders that would fear and honor thee. Keep us looking for our Lord's return. We pray we'd be be found worthy to escape the coming tribulation. Stand before the Son of Man, puts in his name, the name of Christ, above every name. We ask these saints through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Scripture is a lot about faith. And... Every time we find sight, the sight of the eyes, that's where man got into trouble. It goes back to the fall. She looked upon the fruit, we were told. And we know, of course, as a proverbial, the rest is history. Titus 1 and 1, Paul, a servant of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ, according to the faith of God's elect and the acknowledging of the truth which is after godliness in hope of eternal life which God that cannot lie promised before the world began. He promised it. So man he believes it or does not. He rejects it. If he doesn't believe it he, he takes Another belief, which is contrary to God's word, which is inviting the wrath of God. We hear of the word faith used like different faiths. You know, there's only one true faith. Only one kind. In the book of Jude, the faith that was once delivered to the saints is only one. Never will forget Brother Bill Mitchell talking about the church. He said, if I could count to two, to two I'd know that the Lord only had one church. The book of 
Jude, as I mentioned, verse 20. But ye, beloved, building up yourselves in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. Not one at a time. Faith according to Scripture, we just read there in the book of Hebrews. Without it, it's impossible to please God. It's Faith is not sight. That's, I guess we might say, what, where people get off. They put their faith in baptism, something that they see. Our faith is in the working of the Lord, what He did. Man has this problem, of course, we know that he likes to attribute, attribute something to himself. As one brother put it, I sin. That's about all I can attribute to myself. Faith is the substance or the grounds or the confidence of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. In our opening remarks, we look there in the book of Isaiah, and he's going to make man more precious than that finest gold. Through faith. One might have faith in turning a water faucet on that the water will come out. One puts a key in a car and it has faith that it'll start it. And <laughs> my wife had this issue. It got in the car that I drove and turned it and it didn't start. It was a simple problem. But when something like that happens, it shakes you. Like, what's going wrong? Something's, something's, something's not right here. Is it your faith? <laughs> it's a mechanical problem. We often read that passage in the book of Ephesians chapter 2. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. Talking to Campbell out some time back, he said, yeah, that's true, but it's also he had faith in his baptism. I don't read anything pertaining to baptism. I don't see where it's even mentioned here. Ephesians 1 and 18, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that ye may know what is the hope of your his calling and what is the riches of the glory of the inheritance of the saints. He's going to make man finer than that wedge of gold, but it's not going to be the man's work. It's going to be his work in us. What is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe according to the working of his mighty power? That glorified body that we're going to have, what are we What are we going to do to obtain it? There's nothing we can do. He's, he's going to speak and the graves are going to open. We know that faith is... Saving faith is a gift of God. Nothing about us earned it. Such faith makes us, or compels us to do good works, which is our reasonable service. I mean, if you read that account there in Ephesians 2, he's ordained that we should walk in good works. But Well, verse 29 of Philippians 1, For unto you it is given in behalf of Christ not only to believe on Him, but also to suffer for His sake. That gets into where He's going to make a man more precious than a fine golden wedge, the gold of Ophir. That gold which... The electrical current that goes through it actually increases, which is contrary to nature. There's a natural faith, as I just mentioned. You, well, you sit down in a seat, you think it's going to hold you. That's natural faith. This is saving faith. Natural faith looks to the ability of the sinner to come to Christ. Supernatural faith 
looks and the ability of God to draw the sinner. And I guess that's a way of saying what we always said. One, the, the Armenian says he's got to come to God. The Calvinists say that God must draw him. Well, indeed, God must draw him because Christ made mention of that twice in John's Gospel, the sixth chapter. The man is accountable. He is a sinner. He's commanded to repent. God's commanded all men everywhere to repent. That's in Acts 17. Does he mean it? Yes, he does. Or he wouldn't have said it. Well, can he? No, he cannot. He's dead in trespasses and sin. Romans chapter 4. We've looked at this passage many times. Verse 17, as it is written, I have made thee, speaking of Abraham, the, a father of many nations before him whom he believed even God who quickeneth the dead and calleth those things which be not as though they were. Who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations. Abraham was well up in years, still didn't have a son. Then he had Ishmael by Hagar. And that wasn't the promised seed. He had to wait a long time. Abraham was indeed that man that was more fine than a wedge of gold. A hundred years old had a son. Supernatural faith is tested. Just like Abraham was tested. I mean, a, a trial that I think most of us would say, I don't see how he could have done it. When he was told to go out and sacrifice his son Isaac, he went not wavering. Supernatural faith controls one's mind and heart. It's beyond comprehension. We've often made mention of that passage in Second Corinthians five or speaks about how Christ was made sin for us. First Corinthians, Second Corinthians five verse fifteen and that he died for all that they which should live not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. We take this by faith. I mean we are Christ seen us at Calvary we hadn't been born yet. Verse 16, Wherefore, henceforth know we no man after the flesh, yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yeah, yet now henceforth we know him no more. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are becoming new. We think of Christ telling Zacchaeus, come down, I must come to thy house today. That's not the word. What was Zacchaeus' reply? It's in Luke chapter 19. He gladly heard him. It's an Armenian was right. Christ would have worded that differently. Luke 19 and 8. <clears throat> oh, 19 and 5. Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must abide at thy house. Why if Zacchaeus would have said, I ain't coming down and you ain't coming to my house? Now, Zacchaeus had heard about Christ, but he had not met him. Verse 2, And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was the chief among the publicans, and he was rich. And he sought to see Jesus who he was, and could not for the press, for he was the little stature. He did not have one bit of problem with Christ's demands. Make haste, come down, for today I must buy the house. And he done exactly what he was told. 
No Arminianism there. Did Christ interfere? Of course he did, as he always does. If he doesn't, we surely wouldn't come to him. Zacchaeus' confession, verse 8. Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods give out of the poor. And if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I will restore him fourfold. We don't read of anything different. Consider what Noah endured in building the ark. Preaching, a hundred plus years of cutting and sawing and assembling of the ark. They understood, he understood toil and grief. We read in the book of Genesis, the sixth chapter, that there were giants on the earth. It must have been a perilous time. Well, times have been perilous for a long time. But Noah endured by faith. He, he feared and he was moved. The heroes of faith records that. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 16 Above all taking the shield of faith wherein ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Who knows how much he had to do in contending with the unbelievers. I'm sure they were there. Full. Natural faith looks to the will of man. I say supernatural faith looks to the will of God. Supernatural faith makes those that have it dependent upon the will of God. Remember Brother Joe talking some time back? Saul of Tarsus goes to Damascus. The Lord strikes him down. He's blinded. Now did the but Paul, who had become the apostle Paul, Paul the apostle? Was he able to do anything on his own? He was down. He, he couldn't see. He had to be led. Sometime back, I remember Brother Tom Ross talking about a man going across the Niagara Falls on a balance himself on a rope, a high wire they call it, with a man sitting in a chair on his back. I don't know, I, I remember him talking about it, I, I never read about that episode. But what's that man that's riding on his back going to do? He's going to sit there. He's not doing the work. The Apostle Paul... <clears throat> Like I say, he had to be led about. That's in the book of Acts, the ninth chapter. And verse 8, And Saul arose from the earth, and when his eyes were opened, he saw no man. But they led him by the hand and brought him to, into, into Damascus. And he was three days without sight, neither did he eat nor drink. And and there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias who and said, and unto him said the Lord in a vision, Ananias, and he said, Behold, I am here, Lord. And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go to the street which is called Straight and inquire at the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus. For behold, he prayeth and hath seen in a vision a man named Ananias come in and put his hand upon him that he might receive his sight. And Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard by many of this man how much evil he hath done to the saints at Jerusalem. And here he hath authority, the chief priest, to bind all that call upon thy name. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel to me, to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and children of Israel. For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my sake. He was before Nero. 
He went before all the leaders, preaching Christ. Indeed, he was made that wedge of fine gold. Pen supplements of some 16 books of Scripture. His faith was strong, God given. Can you picture someone pleading the Lord for salvation and him saying, No, I'm not, I can't do that? That doesn't sound logical. John chapter ten twenty six. I mean, there's no weakness in God, is what I'm saying. Weakness is in man. Verse 25, I told you and you believe not the works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. But ye believe not because ye are not of my sheep as I said unto you. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. That's called eternal security. That's what we, our hope is in. Not anything that we've done. 1 John 2.19 They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. Throughout Scripture, there is a us and a them. There's us, the household of faith. There were us among the Jews, among themselves. We're, we're, we're Gentiles, we're not Jews. I mean, it takes us a long time sometimes to understand that there is a us and a them. In Scripture, you've got to always understand who is it speaking to. Supernatural faith is given to those of the household of faith. Matthew chapter 6, verse 19. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. Now that's treasures tangible items, gold and silver. Those don't mean a whole lot. Verse 20, But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, for neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through and steal. That's a spiritual thing. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Now that and then Christ's high priestly prayer, John 17. His prayer was, verse 21, that they all may be one as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us. God's people will be one. That means the same intentions, the same mind, the same heart. Glory over the same things, hate the same things. One in all aspects. That's what Christ was about. <clears throat> Verse 23, I and them and thou and me that they may be made perfect in one that the world may know that thou hast sent me and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. Now the world wants to tell you we're all one. In light of what we just read there, it's not so. 
Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory which thou hast given me, for thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. God's eyes are upon his sheep, the sheep of his pastor. He's against the wicked. The heroes of faith, they, they look for the Lord's re return. They look for a city he built like it says in Hebrews chapter 11. Verse 8, By faith Abraham, when he was called to go out of a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed, and he went out not knowing whether he went. By faith he sojourned in the land of promise in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker was God. The heroes of faith all look to a better resurrection. Verse 35, women received their dead raised to life again, and others were tortured not accepting deliverance. Some were spared. The three Hebrews in the book of Daniel were cast in the fiery furnace and were spared, but not all. Others suffered and died. Women received their dead raised to life again, and others were tortured not accepting deliverance that they might obtain a better resurrection, which is looking to eternal rewards. All in 2 Timothy chapter 1 and 12. 2 Timothy 1 and 12. For the which cause I also suffer these things, nevertheless I am not ashamed, for I know that whom I have believed and persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed in, unto him against that day. He had faith in Christ. Natural faith rests in present situation, situational ethics, tangible items. Things that we see, touch, that's natural faith. But I guess the best way to describe the God-given faith is you really can't describe it unless you possess it. <clears throat> Romans chapter 2, verse 3. <clears throat> and, thou, and thinkest thou this, O man, that thou judgest them which do such things and doest the same, that thou shalt escape the judgment of God? What we're commanded to do, God expects us to do. It goes on there, talking about, in verse 6, about God who will render to every man according to his deeds. To them who by patient continuous and well-doing seek for glory and honor and immortality, eternal life but unto them which are contentious and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation and wrath, tribulation and anguish upon every soul of man that doeth evil, of the Jew first and also to the Gentile. Judgment begins at the house of God. We know that from the writings of Peter. It's the same thing we see here. But glory, honor, and peace to every man that worketh good to the Jew first and also to the Gentile. He's going to make man that fine way to go. Paul preached salvation by grace through faith. That alone. But he, he made it plain that we are to walk in good works. <clears throat> That's there in it. 
same book of Ephesians, the second chapter. Ephesians chapter 2. <clears throat> For we are, verse 10, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. That's what could be called our reasonable service. The book of James, again, James chapter 2, verse 18. <clears throat> yea a man may say thou hast faith and I have works show me thy faith without thy works and I will show thee my faith by my works James well the book of James if you read it Verse 1 of chapter 1, James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad. That's the Jews. Does it apply to us? It does, but the law and the oracles of God were committed unto the Jews. But James also preached faith. And we're nowhere given permission to disobey. Chapter 1, verse 17 and 18, Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Of his own will begat he us with the word of truth, that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creature. His will, not our will. That's faith's a great thing. Back to the book of Hebrews, the eleventh chapter. We'll close. Of course, it tells about Noah, talks about Sarah, talks about Moses. Joseph. Moses, it says in verse 25, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Now that the idea of this lesson is making a man more fine than the finest gold of Ophir. These people suffered. I mean, you cannot deny that. Verse 37, they were stoned, they were sawn asunder, were tempted, were slain by the sword, and wandered about in sheep skins and goat skins, being destitute, afflicted, and tormented. Of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens and in caves and the earth. And these all, having obtained a good report through faith, Receive not the promise. Abraham walked that promised land. Because we're told in the book of Acts is not given so much as a place to set his foot. But it's his and his posterity forever. All these having obtained a good report through faith receive not the promise. God provide, having provided something better for us, that they without us should not be made perfect. So do we walk by faith? That's what we're told to. Do we walk by sight? Go back to that passage there in the book of Isaiah. Isaiah, the 12th chapter. Verse 
Verse 9. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, cruel both with wrath and fierce anger, to lay the land desolate, and he shall destroy the sinners out of it. That's just as much of a promise. For the stars of heaven and the constellations thereof shall not give their light. The sun shall be darkened in its going forth, and the moon shall not cause her light to shine. And I will punish the world for their evil, and the wicked for their inequity. And I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease, and will lay low, low, low the haughtiness of man. That's what it's going to require to make. Verse 12, I will make man more precious than gold, even if man than the golden wedge of Ophir. Therefore I will shake the heavens, and the earth shall remove out of her place. In the wrath of the Lord of hosts in the day of his fierce anger, and it shall be as the chaste roe and as a sheep, that no man taketh up. They shall every man turn to his own people and flee every one to his own land. Every one that is found shall be thrust through, and every one that is joined to them shall fall by the sword. Their children also shall be dashed in pieces before their eyes. Their houses shall be spoiled and their wives ravished. That was what come upon Israel. Well, the day of the Lord's fierce wrath is coming quick. Let us stand and we'll sing.